13th Amendment of the United States. It's a doggone shame that I gotta come down here and do this. I'm out here to protest my rights as a, as a citizen of the United States. I'm a, I'm a convicted felon. I'm a three-time convicted felon. And uh, being that I'm on parole, I have lost that right to vote in this historical election in the United States. It's the first time that a, a, a black male is running for president, a, a, a valid black, black man is running for the United States uh, presidency, and a woman as vice president. And uh, I, feel, I feel that I should have the right to vote in this election because I've voted in uh, five major uh, presidential elections. I missed one in 2000 due to my incarceration. And uh, I just feel that this is something my father instilled in me since I was a kid. And I remember when I first turned 18, thanks to the 26th Amendment, I went with my father and I put this little red I, I voted sign on my chest. And I felt so proud coming out of the fire station with that, that I was a part of democracy, that I was a part of something, that I wasn't just a, a person who was crying about what was going on in our country, but actually voicing my opinion about it. So, now, a few years later, I'm not allowed to partake in it. I mean, this is, this is America for crying out loud. And I paid my debt to society. I feel I have uh, by being incarcerated, you know, and, 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 and now I'm told that because I'm still on parole that I cannot vote in this election and I refuse to just sit down and, 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 and allow that to happen without having some type of form of protest, practicing my First Amendment rights and that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I have the, the, the shackles on uh -huh. <laughs> and the chains because my ancestors had them on when they arrived to this country. And basically, I, I thought that, uh, I guess this would bring home some red meat by having the shackles and chains on. You know, because I am a slave. Mm -hmm. I am virtually a slave. I have no rights to this country. Well, the Statue of Liberty was given to us by France. And it, it, it to show that, uh, that uh, we, were, we were a country, a, a great democracy, a freedom and it's Lady Liberty. And Lady Liberty is, is what, what the United States is all about. But yet, as you can see, I'm for sale, I'm a slave. So where's the liberty here? I think it's hypocrisy. Most of the laws that I see today are called codification laws. I call them codification laws. Even today, we have this curfew on, on, on our youngsters in, in the community. Now we also have a new uh, uh, law that's passed that's Anybody that's three or two uh, congregating is considered gang. You have the saggy pants law. You have all these new laws, but they seem to be geared towards people of color. You know, you got people who are in their cars driving by, if it's loud music, uh, it gives the police uh, an excuse to turn the pull you over. So yeah, I, I see a lot of Jim Crow, Jim Crow, Jim Crowism in our government laws. When my sentencing judge sentenced me for a charge deemed appropriate for the crimes I committed, he failed to tell me that when I go into the 21st century slave plantation, that I would be stripped back at the day of my birth and thrown onto an oxen block with thousands more who look just like me. My sentencing judge failed to tell me that as a part of my sentencing that I would be amongst countrymen who use the ancient vocabulary of America's hatred towards people of black. He did not tell me that I would be thrust in a cell, make it as the day of my birth, without food nor water for days. He failed to tell me that if I fell to any command and order by those that I was placed in custody, care, and control with, that they could beat me upside the head with batons. You know, so 
Yeah, I, I see this. Um, I see that uh, the men who control the prison system have traded in their whips for batons. You know, and these these they use the word correction for something. I see nothing in the form of correcting. It's a misnomer. Uh, and uh, I don't see them correcting anything. In fact, I see that New York State prison systems uh, only exacerbate the ills of a person because you come out of prison for, filled with a lot of deep animosity and hatred towards the, the treatment that, that was administered to you while you were behind the walls and raised a barbed wire. What I've seen thus far as far as the, the political uh, arena, like tonight, for instance, uh, there's a, uh, a, pres a vice presidential debate. But I see no one talking about the issue of crime and violence in this country. Uh, no one's talking about racism. No one's talking about sexism, ageism, or, or anything, uh, or uh, 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 gender biases. Because to me, that's political suicide. They dare not talk about something uh, you know, you hear Barack, you hear McCain, both talking about who don't get it. Well, as far as I'm concerned, neither candidate gets it. You know, they don't know what's going on out here. I mean, they're in their their ivory towers. They know nothing about what's happening out here. They claim they do, but they don't. It's the Rich Boys Club. Mm -hmm. That's what I call the U.S. Senate. You know, so um, I, I don't believe. Anything's really going to change for the United States because plutocracy controls the United States. And plutocracy is the, is the ghostwriter of policies in the United States and the cradle of democracy. So I don't see anything's going to change out of this election. But I still want to vote. <laughs>